Today I'm taking the Fox Alien XE Pro and I'm turning it into the Fox Alien XE Pro 8040. It's a fantastic upgrade and it's exactly what you're going to need in the shop to get that larger CNC machine that you need to be able to make those larger projects. These are the items that you have in the box. Of course, we're going to start off with the user manual to be able to assemble everything. And we have a brand new waste board, the T-Track waste board, along with the new drag chain. We have these different components here to be able to put together the base. And of course, a bag of screws. I also have one little extra screw that I have no idea where it goes yet because it was loose in the box. These are the components to be able to add to the frame to extend it out to the 800 millimeters. And of course we have the brand new gantry. Everything else will come from the old machine and be transferred over to this one or a better way of saying all of these parts are gonna go over to the Fox Alien XC Pro. First thing I'm gonna do is unplug the old machine. We don't need the power on while we're doing all of this work. The first thing we have to do is take apart the old machine. Break it down because a lot of the parts and the screws and the components we're going to be using for this upgrade. So the first step, we're going to remove the drag chain. These screws are going to be saved because I'm definitely going to use these again to put back and secure the new drag chain. Next, I'm going to remove all of the different wires and disconnect everything. Now remove the wires from the stepper motor, also the X limit switch and I've saved the screws. Please remember, don't lose these screws and keep yourself organized. Next, I'm gonna remove the wires from the spindle and also for the Z-limit switch. Once these are all disconnected, that frees up the drag chain. Now, of course, the drag chain is not gonna be used again. Now, let's move over to the X motor and we'll disconnect these wires. And don't forget, we've got a brand new drag chain. So let's just go ahead and take this one loose at this end and we'll set the screws with the rest of them. I want to be able to stay organized as I take this machine apart. So I started at one end of the drag chain and I'm coming all the way around now to the other end where it connects to the controller. I'll disconnect all the different components including the Y motor. Once I have that completely done then I'm ready to be able to roll it up and put it away for storage. Next, we need to remove these four screws and remove this unit off. This unit with a spindle and of course the four screws will get reused again with the new upgrade. So save these parts and what I like to do is just group them together and I'll put all four screws with the spindle. I need to remove the limit switches and this drag chain bracket. We're gonna reuse this. So I'm gonna save the screws and I'm going to save all of these components to be able to put back on to the new gantry. And we'll remove this. And again, we'll be reusing this bracket. Next, I need to loosen the screws on this coupler and we're gonna be removing this stepper motor. And that missing screw that we found in our box, I think this is exactly where it's going to be going. Now this is loose. Let's move the screws from the stepper motor. This coupler actually split in half, and that's by design. There's actually two set screws. One that actually physically holds it tight, and then there's another set screw that actually holds it to the shaft. Now we're gonna remove these screws so that we can take the gantry off. You guessed it, we're gonna save the screws because we're going to need these screws to secure the new gantry. With all the screws removed, we just lift this straight up and get it out of the way. This part we're not gonna need again. Let's remove the waste board and we'll get it out of the way also. Don't forget to remove the dust baffles and save the screws. Now you have some brand new dust baffles that will go in place of these, but the screws you'll still need. Now it's time to remove the Y1 and the Y2 axis. Again, save the screws. We'll need them again because these parts will go back onto the new frame. There's no need to remove the drag chain bracket because remember the Y1 and the Y2 axis 
are both being used again. So just leave that bracket on. With all the screws removed, just lift these Y1 and the Y2 axis straight up and they'll come right off the frame. It's time to work on the frame itself. We need to completely disassemble it. Now two of the parts on the Y axis will reuse. The other three components, the front, the middle, and the back, we will not need any longer because we have replacement parts for that. Once again, you will need to save the screws. Now the machine is completely torn apart and it's time to put the new one together. Now just to give you some information, even with the camera setups and moving the camera and being able to take all the different shots, it only took about a half an hour to be able to disassemble the machine. I need to take the new components, this one, and we have this component. So this is going to be the front and the back. This will be the center component. Now these are all new parts. The two pieces that run this way will be from the old machine. So I'm going to grab those and bring those over here. And now we'll be able to assemble this. I like to stay organized by laying out all the parts and gathering up all the screws ahead of time. Now this has the screw, has the lock washer, and it has the flat washer. Very important that that still goes in there. And this will slide in. Of course, everything is pre-drilled and tapped to make assembly very, very easy and very straightforward. Do the same thing to the other side. As I assemble this frame, all of these screws are loose at this point. Every single screw will be put in place, but none of them will be tight. Once I have all the screws in place, then I'll verify that it's square and then tighten all of the different screws. This frame is actually designed with close tolerance. So as you assemble this, it's almost guaranteed that it's going to be square when you tighten it. I like to verify it though, just to make sure that it is 100% square before tightening all of the screws. These two sets of screws are completely loose. I want to take the tape measure, hook it on this end, we'll measure over to this corner, and that's 1,301 millimeters. Let's check this side, again hook it over, we measure it, yes, 1,301 millimeters, so we're exactly square, and I can now tighten these screws. I always want to make sure that the base is square to begin with, It'll make things a lot easier. After I checked for square of this base, I tightened those two screws that were on the back on each side. Then I double checked one more time just to make sure that it was still square. And then I went through and tightened every one of the screws to make sure that the base was good and solid and all the screws were tight. Now it's time to add the Y1 and the Y2 axis and bolt these back in place using the same existing screws that we had from the original machine. This actually goes together very easily. Remember, in the frame itself, the holes are pre-drilled and tapped to be able to accept these screws. Just align the holes with the holes in the frame and you're ready to screw it in. Again, we're gonna put all four of these screws in loosely first. So we need to be able to adjust this left and right, up and down until these go in. Now I have all the four of these screws in and same thing on the back side. I have all four of those in. All of them are loose. Now I'll tighten these up. I'm gonna repeat the same exact process for the other axis. So both the Y1 and the Y2 axis will be completely screwed into the new frame. Now this next step is very, very important. And unfortunately it's not covered in the instructions. When you put on the T-slats for the wasteboard, you have to have them oriented correctly. There is a tongue and a groove on each one of the pieces that must slide together. And that gives you the perfect alignment that you need. If you do not do this, if you put two of the tongues together or two of the grooves together, the screw holes are not gonna line up and you're gonna run into problems. So this is a tip that's gonna save you a lot of time. And again, as always, put all the screws in loose to begin with. That way you can move these individual T-slots left and right and get them correctly aligned with the holes that are pre-drilled and tapped in the base. 
Okay, you have this pack of the screws right here. These are the M516s, and they're gonna be used to attach the new waste board. All the holes are pre-drilled and tapped, so you know exactly where these pieces will get screwed in. So it makes it where there's no guesswork whatsoever. They just drop in place, drop in the screws, and tighten it down. Now we also have the new duff baffles that are gonna go in also. So we'll set those up right here. And this one will go over here. When you assemble your T-Track race board, you have to have it where it butts together and that seam right there will basically disappear. But there's one more factor. You also have a tongue and groove that must be aligned. If you don't have this tongue and groove oriented correctly, it's not gonna fit together and the screws in the base are not gonna line up. Take your time with this step because you have so many different screws that you must align with this T-Track, it's imperative that you put all these screws in loose and make sure that you get everything adjusted correctly. If you try to rush this, you're gonna have a problem and you're gonna find that it's gonna be a little bit tricky and difficult to be able to line up all these different screws into the proper holes. So don't rush this step. The dust baffle goes on with the same screws that you had before. So all total, you have 36 screws for this, and then the remaining four screws that you need are the ones that you're reusing from the other machine. At this stage, all of the T-Track wasteboard is on and the dust baffles are on. The next step, go back and tighten all the screws. Now remember, there were 36 screws that put down the T-Track wasteboard down. The other four screws that you need came from the disassembly of the old machine. Gently lift up the gantry and you're gonna place it directly onto the Y1 and the Y2 axis. Now this is a very precise fit. Take your time and gently set it in place. Now hold on to the gantry because it will tilt over backwards. Immediately put in a screw to be able to secure it in place so it won't tip over and fall. I chose to leave the stretch wrap on the gantry at this point because it was easier to be able to handle it. You'll notice as you take off the shrink wrap that there is going to be a lot of oil and the grease that are lubricating the different components. By leaving this stretch wrap on, you eliminate having your hands get really dirty and messed up. At this point also, I put in all of the screws and completely secured the gantry. If you recall, there were six screws on each side, and these screws are the same ones from the old machine. If you're lucky enough to find the end of the stretch wrap, being able to remove this begins to be very, very easy. You can just literally unwrap it in the opposite way of the way it was put on. And I prefer doing that rather than cutting it, because if you cut this stretch wrap, you run the risk of scratching your machine itself, and I really didn't want to do that. And yes, I was lucky enough to find the end and be able to just unwrap it. Now before I tighten the gantry, I want to make sure that it's square and perpendicular to the waste board. This is a critical step in the tram process to make sure that your machine is going to cut properly. Do not tighten those screws until you do this step. You have just a little bit of tolerance that allows you to be able to rotate this gantry on the y-axis. By placing the speed square onto the wasteboard, you can then take a piece of paper and try to slip it into the top and into the bottom. And if you need to make an adjustment, you can easily do so just by rotating it ever so slightly and then testing it again. Once you're satisfied by trying to place the paper between the speed square and the gantry and it won't fit, then you know that it's completely perpendicular to the waste board itself. Now I like to try and measure this a couple of different places just to make sure that I'm completely perpendicular on all locations across the entire gantry. And once you're completely satisfied that it's completely perpendicular, then tighten all the screws securely. After I completely finish tightening everything, I go back one more time and double check and just verify that it is completely perpendicular. If that paper won't slip between the gantry and the speed square, then I know it's completely perpendicular and I'm not gonna have an issue when I'm carving. Okay, we're gonna add the limit switches on here. 
they'll go right up here. You don't want to over tighten these because you'll break that limit switch. But you do want them snug. That should be good. So those work freely. To add the stepper motor, it's imperative that you line up the flat portion of the shaft on the stepper motor with the little set screw on the coupler. So that needs to just slip right in there. Align it. Take your time. If you don't get it the first time, just adjust it just a little bit until you get it to slip right in there. That is important to be able to have that set screw directly on top of that flat portion of the shaft of the stepper motor. Once you have it in the correct position, then you can add the screws to secure the stepper motor in place. Now remember that little screw that was loose in the box? Well, it goes right here on the coupler. Once you have everything in place, just go ahead and put, install the remaining screws and then tighten everything down. The four screws on the stepper motor and don't forget, go back to the coupler itself and tighten all of the screws there. Verify that everything is tight and secure. It's not uncommon that during shipment, the different screws will come loose and occasionally one will fall out. That's why I always recommend go through the machine from top to bottom and verify that every single screw is completely tight and as it should be. Do not just take for granted that nothing happened in the shipping and that all the screws are automatically tight. The fact that this little screw came out and fell down in the bottom of the box, well, that's okay. That just is a strong testament on the fact that yes, you do need to go back and check everything. Now it's time to add the spindle back onto the gantry, and it requires four screws. Now those are the same four screws that we saved earlier, so hopefully you have them in a good safe spot. So I'm just going to loosely attach this right now and leave the screws loose. Do not tighten them at this point. Okay, I have all four screws in now, and they're loose. Now I want to make sure that this tram is taking place. This will shift a little bit on this y-axis, and I don't want that. I want to make sure that this is totally plumb. I already did the measurement on the gantry, so I know that that is going to be right. But now I need to make sure that it's right going the other direction. And to do that, we're going to put this right there. And have that right up against it. And then I can tighten one screw. And I've screwed one down at the bottom. So these are the two opposite screws. Now I want to grab my piece of paper and slip it in there. And I'll take the paper. And that will not stick in there. We'll do the same thing at the bottom. So that is perfectly perpendicular now to the waste board. I'll tighten these other two screws. Now I'll go through and tighten all four of them now, nice and snug. Next, I'll add the drag chain bracket back in place. And again, this is the one from the original machine. Now it's time to add this drag chain rail. Those two little holes there, they're to secure the drag chain itself. Make sure you have that oriented correctly and then we'll just screw it into place. And yeah, those two screws, they're from the old machine. But it's easy to be able to attach this, but you just want to make sure it's oriented correctly before you screw it in. This is the last little bracket that you need to attach that will take care of securing the drag chain. To add the drag chain now to the machine, it helps to get everything laid out and oriented correctly before you start. Once you have everything under control and the proper layout, then you can start right up here at the top and place that one right onto the small bracket. I like to place one screw in to hold it to begin with while I'm laying out the rest of the drag chain. 
Again, on this end of the drag chain, I'll place one screw in just to be able to temporarily secure it while I'm completing the layout. Again, while I arrange the second portion of the drag chain, I'll secure each end with one screw. Now I'm going back and putting the second screw in to be able to completely secure the drag chain. I already have this one in, but it's of course loose. I'll just slide the cables over and be able to drop in the second screw. So now the drag chain is completely secure and now all we need to be able to do is get everything else tightened up. We can adjust these cables now so we can have access to be able to plug in everything. I like starting on this end and plugging in everything. So this is the X limit. This is the X limit here. We'll get these connected. So this is the Z motor. We need a little bit more cable. I like the idea that Fox Alien uses a drag chain that's large enough where you can still move the cables and slip them forward or backwards to be able to gain or take away a little bit of the length of the cable. That way you can adjust it for that perfect fit. Next, I'll attach the Z-Limit switch. We'll get that plugged in, and then I'll move around on the other side of the machine, and I'll plug in the spindle itself with the two wires there. Everything being labeled makes plugging in all of these different wires very easy, and it's all done. So this section is completed. Any extra cable I can shove through and get aligned just the way that I want it. That looks good. That gives plenty of room. All right, then we're over here to this part now. And we'll do the same thing. This is the X motor. This is the Y limit. We're gonna need a little bit more cable. That plugs in right there. This will plug in right here. Perfect. I repeated the same process on the two wide motors. So the only thing that's left is hooking up all of these cables to the um, controller itself. This may look like a complicated mess, but it's really easy to be able to connect everything on here. I like to start at the top. So this is the X axis. So I'm going to pull out the X axis so here's my x-axis right here. You have a little slot right there, and that pin matches there. So this will slip on. This one will do the same thing. Take the screw, just screw it down. First one's done. Next one is Y1. So let's find Y1. So here is Y1 right here, and here's the other Y1. Now we'll do the same thing. Plug in Y1. Align our pin. Now we're looking for Y2. I'm going to continue this same process and work my way all the way down to the bottom. And you can see this is not a difficult process. With all these different wires completely labeled, all you need to do is just match one pair at a time and be able to plug them in. Okay, at this point, tightening up the last one, and you can see that all of the cables are now plugged in. So again, not a complicated process. You wanna verify that this switch is over on the spindle and not on the laser side, because you'd never know if you had been bumped or something during this whole process. You do have an outlet for a laser, so you choose to add a laser, but at this point, I'm not. I'm just verifying that the switch is in the spindle mode. At this point, the Fox Alien XA Pro 8040 is completely assembled and ready for that first test carve. Let me know in the comments what type of project would you like to do first on this brand new 
Fox Alien XA Pro 8040. In this video, we completely took apart the Fox Alien XA Pro and then put together the upgrade kit and turned it into this machine, which is the Fox Alien XA Pro 8040. So it gives you twice the size. Now this video is getting a little bit long. And what I'd like to be able to do is have a second video where I go through and we're going to verify the calibration on the x-axis. And based on your comments, I'll pick a project and we'll do the first carve on this brand new machine. I look forward to reading your comments, seeing what project that you would like to have me carve to begin with, with this machine, and being able to verify the calibration. I'll also answer any other questions that you may have about this machine. And by the way, there is a link to the Fox Alien website right down below in the description itself. I want to thank everybody for watching this video today. I hope this video has helped you. And if you choose to do the upgrade from the XE Pro to this 8040 to get twice the size machine and still be on a good budget, this video hopefully will have helped you be able to make that whole transition a lot easier with a step-by-step -step process on how to be able to put it together. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video, and you know what it is already. We're going to calibrate the x-axis, verify that it's correct, and then, based on your suggestion, we'll do the first carve. So for now, everyone, see you next time. Bye-bye.